Hi, Abdul. Hi, Abdul. Yes. What is the question? Uh, the question? Yes, sir. Uh, I want to ask uh, uh, when we have uh, in between the pile, the toe and the top, we have some unusual uh, amplifier amplified wave. So sometimes there is a possibility that it shows due to strata change. Let's say it's uh, going from the clay to the sand or from the sand to the clay. How can we differentiate that is it a strata change or it may be a bulging or a making? Um, okay, uh, this is actually about uh, interpretation, but let me start the... Um, I'll call it the pile wave of, uh, application. Yeah, I'm going to share this with you. I also uh, typed the, sorry, I'm trying to do too many things together. Okay, uh, Abdullah, can you mute your microphone for a second because it's giving us uh, echoes? Okay, great. Uh, I have shared, I think I've shared the PileWave link on the chat window yeah okay so file wave is here okay it's a web application you don't have to install anything and it simulates the wave propagation in a pile uh, it's very easy to train yourself and to see what it does so uh, what you can do is you can actually change the shape of the pile here so let's see what happens when you have a necking on the pile I think we're all familiar with that. The wave goes down, and then you can get a second reflection for the necking, and the reflection from the end of the pile. Now, if this was not a necking, but a bulge like that, the wave will not go down here. OK, I'm, I'm going to paint here. Uh, OK, I'm just going to paint, paint over this reflection. And when you have a bulge, it's going to go exactly in the opposite direction. Oh, it, my marking moved. Okay, it was here. Now it's here. So this is an a, a neck. Oh, what is it? Yeah. It was here for a neck, and this is a bulge. Now note a very interesting thing: a bulge has an alternating uh, reflection. So first one is up, then down. We can even, uh, let's make it much more extreme just to show you what I mean. Okay. So the first, first reflection is up, then down, up, and this is already just coinciding with the reflection from the top, etc. Okay, so this is how you can tell a uh, bulging from a necking. Now, in real life, things get much more complicated because you get often something like that. Okay. And then you have a, a bulge followed by a neck. And then it reverses direction and everything becomes much more complicated. Uh, and things can get much more complicated in real life when you have something like that, which is a, not unheard of. Okay, so now in this case, if we have a point with a more extreme neck, it's quite hard to tell uh, if this is just a small deviation from the profile or is it a soil a strata change or this is a layer. Now, this is a limitation of the method and it's very hard to overcome that. Uh, we just have to know which conditions are harder to test. So you can see that this bulge here created this area here. Let me let me erase the pin marks. 
So the bulge here created this echo, followed by uh, returning to the normal shape. But after that, it's quite hard to tell. So in, in conditions like that, where we have, for example, a lot of boulders, we're quite lucky if we are able to identify the toe. And more than that, is probably asking too much. Um, now, I think we are doing a little bit of a side tracking here, because the purpose of this uh, seminar is really the new pet user interface. Uh, I just answered your question because that was the only one. So uh, I'm looking for more uh, questions. Agniva? Yeah, so everyone please mute your microphone except for uh, Agniva. Oh, and I can also see a questions. I, I have a, a question, that is, yeah. um, can, can you please explain a little about the matching signal menu? Yeah, we can try that. <laughs> okay. So let's look at about, okay, this, this might be a good candidate here. So signal matching. Yeah. Again, this is not a new feature to this uh, version, but uh, we can go over that if no one objects. And um, wait a minute. Uh, Ravi, I've seen your question and please uh, send us by email and I will answer you uh, by text with uh, direct uh, instructions. It's gonna be more efic efficient. Okay, Ravi. I can type. Yes, uh, Agniva, I'm answering you. So, signal matching is done using this icon. And what we can see here is uh, the You're top. What? You're not sharing. Uh, oh, I'm not sharing. Sorry. I forgot to share. Okay, so okay. starting over. Signal sharing, a signal matching here. What we can see here is uh, three panes. The top is the soil uh, strata profile. Second one is the guest pile profile. And at the bottom, we can see the measured pile, which is blue, like always we have. Just, just the pile that we have here on the background, just this curve. And the orange one is the simulated data. So if we can change this manually. So if we have, okay, just like in PileWave, we can we can change this manually, and we can see the effect on the orange line, and we can try to match this to that. But before we start, the first thing that we need to match is to uh, the level. So we want to see that the orange level is approximately the same and i'm going to add some amplification by clicking clicking here so i'm raising the sorry I'm, I'm adding friction to the whole profile and you can see at the bottom here here that it it's going to look much more correct okay so this is about the amount of amplification overall friction that I need to add to the soil to get these these two signals to be approximately the same. So I know I'm on a good area. I can change the blow duration, which is not doing much change here. Okay, so this will match just this area here. Okay, so now we're in a good start. We can do that manually and as you can see it matches our intuition quite well that we have a, a necking in this area a small neck um, and so on now if we are lazy we can now say okay i think this area is okay for me and this area is okay let's do a automatic matching of the of the middle area so I just click the match icon. And now the software is gonna run a, a 
evolutionary algorithm. It's going to try a lot of combinations. It already tried 160 combinations of um, issues in the pile, and it's going to change them gradually to get a better match. Okay, so what we can see here is right now we see that it's converging quite a lot. It's, we don't see much change anymore. We can stop it now. And we get an indication of the match quality. 80, 81 is quite good. And we can see that the software did not agree with our uh, intuition. Um, and it looks like there is a little bulge here, which ends at this point. That's also a good explanation for this. Now, I, I want to remind you that there is an infinite number of pile shapes that can create the same reflectogram. Uh, someone has his microphone open? Yeah. Okay, that's better. So there is an infinite number of pile shapes that can create the same reflectogram. In physics, it's called an inversion problem because we know the outcome of the test, but we know, don't know the input model. The input model is actually the shape of the pile. And um, just like uh, many mathematical uh, equations can give you the result of six, we, don't, we cannot tell which equation actually gave us six. Uh, just a, an, as an example. So uh, ag again, in this case, many different pile shapes can do that. Now that's a limitation of this method and uh, anyone who claims to, pl to plot the pile shape is actually misleading. Uh, the best that you can do is to plot a pile shape, a possible pie sh pile shape. And unless for very, very trivial cases, um, where all the infinite number of cases are very, very similar, and you can call them just one shape. In all practical purposes and in all real piles, there's more than one explanation for that. Okay, once we've done that, we can do several things. We can generate a report, and then we can include this co by copy paste into our report. We can save this match for later and we can close it. Okay, I want to remind you all, and it says here very clearly, that this is just a technology preview. Um, the use of signal matching should be uh, considered as a assistant, as an interpretation a aid, a, or something like that, a sidekick, and not uh, something that you can trust like a, like an experienced engineer. You can always, you should always use your engineering judgment. I'm accepting more questions now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm serious. Yeah. Is, it possible it's, it's, to, uh, is it possible to include the peak velocity uh, in the graph? And as well as yes. the time of the testing also? Yes. Look here. Settings, standards, Indian standards. There you go. Here. Okay. That's what and you wanted? The time of, yes, that's what you wanted. And uh, also the time of testing is included? Time of testing is included, of course. When you do your uh, report, you can select uh, which, uh, sorry, here, not here, or oh, uh, here you, on columns, you decide okay, which, okay, uh, okay. which fields to include, and you can have the date of test and the time of test. So let's do thank that. You, you. And I'll generate a report. I'm just going to show it through. Ah. And here you can see the date and time of your test. Thank you. Sure, you're most welcome. Um,
Okay, Ravi, I see you have another question about guidelines on soil properties and values. Okay, excellent problem uh, question because we have a ready-made answer for that. So, um, first of all, I'm sharing this page with you, and I'm also going to copy the link into the chat window so everyone can see that on their screen it's again it's a web application and calculators so here we have concrete age and grade which will give you a expected wave speed that's quite old but the new thing here is if you have the wave speed the length of the pile the diameter and the SPT value we can get an expected attenuation so let's say again we've done it before let's do it again Let's say this is a 30 meter pile. Uh, with one meter diameter, it's still testable, although the L to D ratio is one to 30. But once the SPT value increases, even not by much, you can see that the attenuation is really rising. And for example, if this was a hard soil like 50, Amplification, uh, um, the needed amplification or attenuation, it's the same thing, one, uh, one compensates the other, is more than 1,000. This is, of course, a non testable pile. If we click here, we can see the formula and read the whole paper. And in this paper, you can see this chart linking SPT, L to D ratio. So SPT is each line is different, LTD ratio, and the resulting uh, amplification. So if we start with the pile with L2D ratio of 30, and we got an SPT of five, we can expect, uh, expect quite a reasonable amplification. But if we go to, if the SPT is higher, we're gonna end up with a, amplification which is much higher now let me draw some areas here so let's say i say up to a uh, up to this area it's an easy easy test anything above here is hard to impossible okay or and in this area so this is easy this is hard and everything in between is uh, possible. Medium. Okay, these are the, the medium cases. Now, if you have this information beforehand, we can, you can give the uh, owner or uh, the specifier, anyone who ordered the test, you can give them a prediction about how hard and how successful the tests are going to be. And you have to include some other factors like if you know about different soil layers and boulders then spt i mean this is just the mean spt if you have many soil layers and boulders it's going to make this test even more complicated um, but still you anyone should know that in very hard conditions you should be lucky to get the length and getting more information about uh, extent of neckings or things like that is probably uh, asking too much okay so you have this okay uh ravi asked if we can check the effect when the soil strata is varying and no we did not do that it is possible but um it's uh, getting over complicated in this case and since this uh, the value that we get is anyway it's just a, a the order of magnitude uh, the this expected amplification or attenuation and um, i think it's asking for too much what you can do is you can actually split the file uh, the pile if you have 20 meter pile top 10 meters in one layer and the other 10 meters in another soil layer take them both and uh, multiply the attenuation so if both uh, one is giving you attenuation 10 the other one is giving you 20 together it's going to be 200. i linked 
Uh, oh, the paper I linked, I sh showed you is linked from this uh, the calculators page here. Read the full paper. Okay. Um, stop sharing. Raise your hands. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, you can unmute and uh, thank, give everyone a thank or. Uh, yeah. Pardon? Two questions. Which more questions? No, I answered all the questions that I can see. All the questions are from Ravi. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I see a question from Ben. And Ben asks, what does the value of amplification represent? Currently using the system that does it in dB per... Okay. I'm going to return to a pile wave. And let me just put everything in position. And I'm going to share it again. Share. Full screen. Okay, so we're again in the pile wave simulation, and now I'm just going to click go, and we can see that we get a decent store reflection. Now, let's say that there is a lot of soil friction, and we can modify the soil friction here. So I'm adding some soil friction here, and clicking go again. And what we can see now it, is that we get hardly any reflection to compensate that we need to add amplification so if we will amplify we can get that now what happened here and um, because there is a lot of soil friction for every meter that the wave passed it lost some of the energy um, and then call then called it uh, decibels for uh, for per millisecond that's fine it can be uh, also decibels per meters because because we know the wave speed and let's say that the wave lost uh, six decibels per millisecond which in one millisecond is two meter of a pile six db is half which means that the energy drops to half every two meters uh, at four meters it's going to drop to a quarter and so on uh, so after a uh, 20 meters, let's say the pile is 10 meters, it already dropped to one thousandth of the initial energy, and we're going to see nothing here. It's going to look like a flat line. To compensate that, we apply exponential amplification. The nature of the attenuation is logarithmic, the nature of the amplification is exponential, and they are actually um, compensating much one. Uh, the other and with proper amplification set you should see the pile as if it's in air okay now let's go back here to the pet software and okay let's look at this pile it looks quite reasonable but if the amplification was just one sorry one Okay, it looks very much like the pile wave example that I, that I just showed you. So actual piles, every pile needs some amplification. Now the automatic amplification sets this automatically and we have amplification of 34. Now, and that's, that's not a lot, that's a very typical amplification. Okay, so um, decibels per, per millisecond is a very hard, unit to work with then i think a mm. uh, simple amplification is much much easier we have here the amplification curve and you can see that amplification here is one and here it reaches 34. if we drag this it shows you the uh, the 
the end of the line is actually where the maximum amplification is applied. Right. Okay, Ben. Yep. Uh, okay. Any more questions, gentlemen? Ravi. Ravi shared. Oh, uh, Jorge. Jorge Ram asked, uh, is it true that the smaller the diameter, the more complex the signal to capture? Yes, of course, L to D ratio or length to diameter is a very dominant factor in the analysis and the success of this method because um, small diameter piles tend to lose more energy compared to their, to their uh, skin, uh, sorry, to the cross section, to the soil. So they're losing more energy, they need more uh, amplification, and therefore the toe reflection is much weaker. And um, uh, Sundra, can you please mute your uh, microphone? Sunada, sorry. Thank you. Okay, a large uh, last questions for today. Uh, Ravi asked, many times we notice a, lies, a, a, a large rise in the curve near the head. What's the, what can this indicate? For example, here, uh, is that something uh, you're uh, referring to? Let's, uh, okay, I'm sharing again. let's move everything that isn't relevant okay so ravi something like that here yeah uh, even more than that we notice sometimes yeah yeah sometimes it, but if we have a more extreme example here here okay yeah maybe like this. so you're re referring to this part yeah correct okay now the the signal that we're seeing here is actually a velocity profile which means the velocity of the wave. Now, uh, if we will integrate velocity over time, we get a uh, movement or uh, distance move. Now, it is quite clear that the small plastic hammer that we use does not really move or drive the pile into the ground, which means that any, uh, any velocity down will have a upwards velocity compensating it and in theory these two areas before amplification of course these two areas should be uh, should be identical just in theory now in practice it's also very important where you strike the pile how far the sensor is from the the accelerometer and some other factors like how bouncy the, the concrete is and so on. But that's the, the physical explanation. When you integrate, if these two areas are the same, it, it means that at this point here, at this point of time, the pile head has returned to the original location. It bounced a little bit down, returned to the original location, and now it is resting and it, the wave is now propagating down and the wave once the wave reaches back up it's going to pull the top of the pile back up and we can also see the echo here so this area here and this area here should also be the same now this all very theoretical it only happens in very uh, simple cases but at least that's the the physical explanation for this phenomenon. Uh, most of the time, we have noticed that the uh, head uh, at the top is tapering, maybe say half a meter at the top. Because when they cut off the pile, most of the time we have noticed that the head is in tapered shape; it's not perfectly vertical. So, how will be the reflection of such heads? Uh, you can use the pile wave uh, to simulate that, and 
another thing, you can also use the signal matching to try to simulate that. But in general, gradual changes in in the pile shape have a very, very uh, limited effect on the result. Um, let's okay. Let's say we have this pile here. I'm going to erase all the marks, and let's say we have a taper head, tapered head like that, something like that. Yeah, correct. You can see that it has almost hardly half a meter. Yeah, but the extent of that is going to change the extent of the uh, of the reflection. But you can see that it has a very limited effect. Okay, it does give you a little bit of a, re a rebound here. But if you take that to the extreme, a pile that looks like that will look like a perfect pile. Okay, the method can only detect uh local changes and it's also going to look exactly the same if we do it the other way around only local changes are detected by the echo test 